Greetings, citizens of the internet. I'm Static Buzz, and we're going to be playing some Brigadine, the Legend of Runercia. Runercia, that's kind of a different name. I've never played this series. I don't know much about this game. I saw Velcos playing it a little bit, and I like strategy, tactical strategy games, turn-based, all that good stuff. So I figured I would give it a shot. So here is my noob playing Brigadine series starting now all right let's go let's check out options I don't know what we got language English audio turn down the music just a tad I think we're good on the volume of the game though I don't think we have to worry about much about that subtitles Auto scroll, why not? Nah, let's go off so I can read it just in case we need to be reading it. Sometimes they go too fast. All right. <clears throat> New game. Here we go. I, should I do tutorial? Probably, right? <laughs> uh, all right, let's start with the tutorial and then I will go to the main mode. Challenge mode. I don't even know. Uh, yeah, that might be too much. To start with, good thing you can't start with that. All right, let's go training mode. Introductions. The main mode is where you select a nation power to play as, while you're, while you unify Runercia by occupying all the bases on the map. Other nations are also trying to conquer Runercia as well. Be sure to monitor the map carefully as you guide your nation. If all your nation bases are lost, then it's game over, which I assume could very easily happen. We'll try to, we'll do our best to make sure it doesn't. We'll see. Gameplay is divided into an organization phase, where preparations are made, and attack phase, where invasions occur. One season consists of one organization phase and one attack phase. The organization phase is where you prepare for battle by summoning monsters, organizing your troops, and positioning them at a base for invasion or defense. A horse icon at the top left of the map screen will indicate you are in the organization phase. We don't get to see that right now, so uh, see if I see it when we're doing it. During the attack phase, troops units will battle to control bases. Other enemy nations will also fight each other during this phase. Defeat an enemy nation in direct combat to occupy their base. If there are no knights in the target base, you occupy the base immediately. The sword icon at the top left of the map screen indicates you are in the attack phase. Alright, control and movement. Are you sure you want to start the control and movement? Yes. I mean, is this like a full-on tutorial? I guess it is, so... Whew, this might be a bit. <clears throat> oh, it's automatically going. At tier 5, a knight will master their current class. This allows them to retain a magic in certain... Why is it going that fast on its own? Oh, because it's loading. These are just tips while it's loading. Guess that makes sense. Alright. Organization phase. Year 781. One season. Control and movement. Welcome to the world of Brigadine, the legend of Rune Saria. This tutorial will explain the controls while you play the game. <clears throat> Current tutorial sections and progress is indicated by the display above. Control and movement. This tutorial has a total of 13 sections. Press the A button. When actions need to be taken during the tutorial, the objective will be displayed here. Let's try it out. Press the A button. Alright. Every completed objective contributes to your tutorial progress. Keep it up! In this game, you select one of the six nations to play as and unify Runeseria by occupying all the bases on the map. Each nation has bases within its territory. If you invade an enemy base, a battle begins on the battle map. Win this battle and your nation will occupy that base. Pretty standard. The battles are the heart of this game, but first you'll have to position troops adjacent to an enemy base in order to invade. Try moving a few to Lorentz now. 
First, let's review information about the base at Lance Lanster, where troops are currently stationed. When the cursor is on the base, the base information is displayed on the bottom left of the screen. Pay close attention to the number of the of rune knights and monsters stationed here. So is that two knights and five monsters? I don't know what the atomic symbol number is or the sword and staff symbol is. There are two rune knights and five monsters stationed here. You can also see the total combat power of the troop at this base. While the cursor is still on the base, press the A button to open the base menu. Alright. Now your objective is to move the troops. So highlight the move with the left stick or directional button and select it with the A button. Alright. When the mouse well, sorry, when the move command is selected, a list of all the troops stationed at this base will be displayed. Review the combat power of the troops displayed and move powerful troops over to fortify the base. In this game, knights and monsters move together as troops. Troops are made of a rune knight that leads a collection of monsters while the monsters alone cannot be moved to another base. This time, we'll be moving Rubino, the nation's ruler, and one of his foremost knights, Sizzler. Press the L button to move all troops or select more than one troop with the R button. For now, use the R button to select Rubino and Sizzler. Alright, I've selected both. Use the A button to confirm your selection. Good. The troops to be moved will be shown above over there, okay. Right where my camera is, so I can't really see them, but that's alright. The troops to be moved will be shown as above. Next, use the directional buttons or left stick to move the cursor to Lorentz and press the A button. Alright, so... Um... Oh, it's not the right place. Where? Oh, Lorenz. Way over there. I was thinking it was con right next to it. They can move some pretty good distance then. The order to send out troops is complete. Let's check to see if the order has been given correctly. Close the base menu with the B button. Sorry, I got something in my eye right now. Something. Got a star in my eye. Just kidding. All right. <clears throat> Close the base menu with the B button and move the cursor over Lorenz again. Alright, now moving the cursor over Lorenz again. Rabino and Sizzler have not started moving yet, but when a destination is active, an arrow will point from the current location to it with information available for you to check. As long as there is a pathway of your base leading to the destination, your troops will reach their destination based by or their destination base by the next phase, no matter how distant. Good work. Now that you've given move orders to your troops, it's time to look at the next phase. Press the minus button to end the organizational phase and proceed to the attack phase. Oh, I gotta look at my pro controller. Which one's the minus? All right. Are you sure you want to set commands for organization phase and enter the attack phase? Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Attack phase. This is the attack phase. Any move orders given in the previous phase will be carried out now. Let's see if Rubino and Sizzler's troops have arrived at Lorentz safely. If the cursor is still on Lorentz since you ordered troops to move here in the previous phase... Notice Rubino and Sizzler's icons on the bottom right of the screen displayed with the base information for Lorenz. Mm. This is a lot of reading. <coughs> Alright. Press the A button to open the base menu. Open in the base menu. The base menu has different options during the attack phase. Select the attack command to invade. 
enemy bases. Note, however, that troops recently moved from another base cannot be directed to attack an enemy base immediately. Select the attack command to see this rule in effect. Alright, it says, Like the move command, the attack command will show which troops can be ordered to launch an attack. As Rubino and Shizzler's troops were moved recently, their troops are darkened, indicating they cannot be ordered to attack. Press the B button twice to return to the map, the main map for now. Once, twice, three times a map. All right, good work completing all of the objectives in this tutorial. This tutorial focused on troop movement. The next tutorial will explain how to attack enemy bases. Control the movement complete, complete, complete. Yeah, organize and invade. Yes. Let's go. I need to know how to do it. So let's go. Experience points. So there's an RPG kind of feel to your characters and everything, which I like. <clears throat> it's kind of what sold me when I was watching Valkos was that uh, the battle seemed like they took a long time and there's a lot of deep strategy and you built your characters up in many different ways so I was looking forward to that welcome to the world of Brigadine the legend of runes Rune, Runercia uh, I'll get it one of these days this tutorial will explain the controls while you play the game in this tutorial, you'll learn about troops, organizations, and the steps necessary for an enemy base invasion. First, confirm that Rubio and Shizzler's troops are stationed... It just says Lorenz, at Lorenz. Next, check the base information for Warren, the target enemy base for your invasion. The key information to note here is the total combat power displayed above the target base. 7752 is that the number they're talking about I think so total combat power indicates the sum of the combat power of all enemy troops stationed at a base generally the base with the bigger number will have the advantage <clears throat> currently your total combat power is higher than the enemies but let's increase the number to ensure victory Okay, then maybe I'm not seeing theirs because I thought mine was 770, 700, 7,750. Ah. Specifically, we'll be adding monsters to Rubino's troops. Open the base with the A button. All right. The objective this time is to organize your monsters. Select the troop command from the base with the A button. We did it, we did it. All right. On the troop screen, there are a number of options to help you prepare for your invasion. As previously, previously mentioned, monsters will be able... Ah, uh, can't read right now. Monsters will be added to Rubino's troops. Select the units command. Units. The units menu is where you organize monsters by adding or removing them from troops. Take the unicorn from the standby menu and add it to the troop. But first, let's take a closer look at two important parts of troop organization. Magic pool and magic cost. Let's start with the knight's magic cost. This number indicates the limit of the combined magic pool of the monsters in a rune knight's troop. Alright, so he can have up to 215 and he only has 155 now. If I'm reading that right, I think I am. Each knight's magic pool is different and increases with their level. Up to six monsters can be placed into a troop as long as their combined magic cost does not exceed the total magic pool. Take a look at the combined magic cost of the monsters in Rubino's troops. Notice that his magic pool is 215, but he is currently only using 155. So he has 60 remaining. Yay, I was right. <clears throat> now let's look at the magic cost. This refers to the magic cost units required to place a monster into a troop. Take a look at the unicorn in the standby menu. A magic cost of 40 is displayed below the icon. Actually, a cost of 55 is displayed below the icon. Okay. 
Since we already know Rubio has 60 left of his magic pool, the unicorn can be placed into his troop as it only has a magic cost of 55. Looks like everything is in order. Now let's go ahead and place the unicorn into the troop. First select an empty slot on Rubino's troop with the A button. Boom. The slot is now highlighted, which means the slot is now ready. Now we can select a monster to move. Use the direction button or the left stick to select the unicorn in the standby menu. Mm, do I have to summon him? Thought I was just moving. Right, let's try summon. Are you sure you want to end this? No. Um. Is that not the unicorn? That looks like a unicorn. Nightmare, Lucan. Oh, it's over on the... It's over there. I was looking at the wrong one. Okay. So that cost is only 40. All right. They were right. I was wrong. We got it. Once, uni Once the unicorn has been selected, information will be displayed on the bottom of the screen. Right there. Most of the values here are stats like HP, MP, or attack, all of which affect the unit's combat power. To get a basic idea of the unicorn's strength, look at its combat power. 490. Press the A button to place the unicorn into the troop. Bingo. There. Did it. Unicorn is now in the troop. You can also use the same step in reverse to move the unicorn from the back to the standby menu. With the unicorn in Rubino's troops, you can see that his troop, com his troops' combat power has gone up, while the magic pool available for use left has gone down. Press the B button three times to return to the main map. One, two, three. All right. After adding monsters to the troop, the next step is to invade in an enemy base. Let's do it. Press the minus button to end an organization phase and start the attack phase. Did that already, but we'll do it again. Are you sure you want to set command? Yes, we want to go to the attack phase. Let's go. Attack phase. Let's give Rubino and Shizzler's troops orders to attack the enemy base of Warren. I thought it was Lorenz. Oh, Warren's over there. Lorenz is ours. So all we did on the first one was move it for Lanster to Lorenz. I get it. Okay, I was thinking that for some reason that was the one we were invading, but we're invading Warren. Got it. Remember that you can only attack an enemy base that is adjacent to one of your own bases. Put the map cursor over Lorenz and press the A button to bring up the base menu. All right, select attack from the base menu. Attack! And a window with the troops available for an invasion will appear. Now we need to select Rubino and Shizzler. First select Rubino, Rubino's troop with the R button. These names. Did it. Now with Rubino, Rubino, Rubino's, with Rubino's troop selected, press the R button again to select Shizzler's troops. So much reading right there. Now both Rubino's and Shizzler's troops are selected. Press the A button to confirm your selection. Uh, are they selected? Attack, target, attack. Okay, so that's what happens is they say attack, target. Okay. Now select an enemy base to invade. The only base connected to Lorenz is Warren, so the target base has been Auto selected for you this time. Press the A button to select Warren, the Warren base. Go in it. And which, when you give out the command to attack, an arrow points from the attacking base to the defending base, similar to the move command. Now you're ready to invade the enemy base. Good work completing all of the objectives in this tutorial. We don't even get in any combat in this one. Tutorial focused on troop organization and invading bases. The next tutorial will explain combat. Yes, let's go. 
I'm saying it too much, aren't I? Uh, maybe a let's boogie, let's rock. I don't know. I'll, I'll come with something else. I'll, I'll switch it up. Year 781, Season 1, Battle of Warren. Battle Basics. Welcome to the world of Brigadine, the Legend of Runer Sia. This tutorial will explain the controls while you play the game. Time to begin the best part of the game. Troop combat! Win this battle to take possession of the base and move one step closer to conquering the continent. Alright, generally speaking, you win a battle by driving away all enemy troops or defeating the ruler. Knights will retreat... White knights will retreat wounded if their HP is reduced to zero, but monsters will, with no HP, are destroyed. Sorry, my camera is right there. When a knight retreats, all monsters and their troops retreat as well. When a ruler retreats, all other knights of that nation will also retreat, and the battle ends. Hmm. How do you tell which one? I guess if they're not a monster, they're probably... A knight or a ruler that says prince on the uh, Rubino so he might be a prince he might be a ruler all battles are turn-based and turn ends once all troops or both sides have finished their actions Knights with a higher level will act first so level makes a difference in when you attack Knights the Knights face icon on the right mark the action sequence invading invaders have a sword icon defenders have a shield all right so they're talking about the the order in which we can go in a monster troop is marked with an a b or c higher level knights act first so there may be changes to the action sequence at the start of a turn if a knight gains a level during combat interesting turn one Let's take a look at some combat commands. During a troop's action, the HP bar of the knight and monster units in the troop will be highlighted in white. It's time for Shizzler's troops action. So the icon of the units that can perform an action are highlighted. The knight of the troops will have their HP bar adorned with a crown as they are the leader of the troop. When the HP of the leader drops to zero, all monsters in that troop will retreat. First, let's try moving Shizzler. Select Shizzler with the A button. Select Move from the menu. Then move him to the hex indicated by an arrow. Move. Simple, pretty simple. After moving the skill in standby, Options are displayed so that you can select the next command. What is that MU? Uh, if, uh, what is that thing coming out from his feet? Uh, I can't talk today. Uh, emanating, that's the word I was thinking. Emanating from his feet. After moving, the skill and standby options are displayed so that you can select your next command. As enemy troops are still quite far away, select standby to end the unit's action. Okay. Next, move the monster in Shizzler's troop to the spaces near him and put the monsters on standby as well. Okay. Move. Uh, there we go. Standby. Okay, so you have to move. Have to say standby before you go to the next one. Move. Standby. Next is the enemy troops action. The current action sequence of all the troops on the battlefield can be viewed on the right of the screen. You can see that after the enemy's troops completes their actions, it will be Rub Rubino's turn.
Now it's Rubino's troops action, but first here's an explanation about the role of rulers on the battlefield. Rulers refer to the leader of a nation. If a ruler's hit point drops to zero, that nation will lose the battle, even if there are still other allies left on the battlefield. Well, that's not good. <clears throat> Therefore, the ruler must stay out of the enemy's attack range. The opponents this time aren't very strong, however, so you can move him toward the front line. Alright, so I guess we're moving in. Move. Stand by. Repeat the process with all the monsters in Rubino's troop. After Rubino troops action, all ally and enemy actions are complete. This marks the end of the first turn of the battle. Alright, let's uh, move. Stand by. Move. Stand by. And last one. Turn two. <coughs> All right. That's it for the basic of troop movement and controls during combat. Next, we'll explain command range and try moving our units base on the, this new knowledge. First, let's take a look at command range. Is that what's emanating from his feet? Command range, the area in which a rune knight leader is able to use their mana to give orders to the monsters in their troop. Hover the cursor over a unit and some colored hexagons around the commanding knights show up. The colored hexagons show the command range if a monster moves beyond this range, their strength is reduced. Note, monsters outside the knight, their knight's command range are indicate, indicated by an icon. Terrain effect. The effect of a terrain has on a unit can be used to give yourself an advantage in combat. Each battle map has hexagons on it, its own terrain type. A unit's preferred terrain will affect their no mobility, accuracy, and evasion. Terrain effect is shown at the, the bottom of the screen. The left shows the current terrain effect and the right shows terrain effects after moving. Gotcha. So now we gotta move. It's time for Shizzler's troops action. Move him closer to the enemy in order to attack. All right. Move monsters and Shizzler's troops to space within his command range. Shizzler's movement type is categorized as planes. This is the most common type of movement category among units. The units move well on flat terrains but suffer a penalty in accuracy and evasion on other terrains. Always check the terrain when moving your units. Also, though these units can walk further distances, beware of moving units too far forward as they may become surrounded by enemy. Stand by. Oh, sorry, I guess I should be reading this. Because these units fly, they have no issue moving all around on any terrain. However, that, that also means they have no preferred terrain. Keep in mind that they are weak against units that use bows, such as centaurs and hunters. So weak against any ranged type of projectiles. Monsters like Gigas, Jigas, Gigas, I don't know how to say his name, Gid Jiggy, uh, that have an advantage on mountain terrains are categorized as mountain. These units gain accuracy and evasion boost on mountain terrains. However, these stats will decrease when fighting on forest or watery terrain. So he's pretty much zero and zero in planes. Stand by. Right now, Mr. Lizard Man. Monsters like the High Lizard Man have an advantage on watery terrains, are categorized as swamp. These units gain accuracy and evasion boost on water terrain. However, these stats will decrease when fighting on rocky or forest terrains. 
The there are units with other terrain types as well, so be sure to check during battle. Move. So basically zero zero with him as well. And stand by. Now it's the enemy's turn. Ouchie! Get him! What is that red thing? Alright. Rubino's troop action. Now the battle will begin in earnest. Use an ally's troop to attack the enemy. Oh, I'm supposed to be reading. Rubino is in a position to use, a sp to use spells to attack. Although spells cost MP, there's no fear of being countered and spells generally have a 100% hit rate. However, spells cannot be used after a unit has just moved. To use the spell, select Rubino and choose the Frost spell from the magic menu. Magic. Frost. I'm going for the... What is this thing? An imp? Freeze! Ariel's freeze again. All right, unicorn turn. The unicorn is in position to use a healing spell. Why would I want to do that? Nobody's really hurt. Healing spells consume MP to recover hit points or heal status conditions. Like spell attacks, they cannot be used after a unit has just moved. To use a spell, select the unicorn and choose heal spell from the magic menu. Magic heal. Who do they want me to heal? They want me to heal the dragon who has like a sliver of health missing. But we did it. That's the tutorial for you. The unit is adjacent to the enemy after moving, they may attack by selecting a skill from the skill menu. Move the wyvern to select skills to attack the enemy. Alright, and now... Skill, tail whip. Before the attacking, always check the battle forecast panel. From the left to the right. You can say, see values that represent the critical hit rate, accuracy, and power of the attack. So cr critical rate is 10%, accuracy is 100, and power is um, down to 102. I, guess. I don't know how to read that. Is it either 104 or 102? Critical rate shows the chance of landing a critical blow. Accuracy is prob probability of the skill actually connecting. And power refers to the damage the attack will deal. Similarly, a forecast about how much counter damage the enemy will deal is displayed together with other stats as well. The unit's HP display will show how much HP is expected to remain should the uh, opposing unit land their attack. Now press the A button to execute your attack. Tail whipped him. Whip it. Whip it good. Oh, that's it. I don't get to finish the battle. I don't get to finish. All right, good work completing all of the objectives in this tutorial. This tutorial focused on the basics of combat. Next tutorial will explain combat strategies that were not covered in this tutorial. Let's do it. Let's do it. You want to start the combat strategies? Yes, let's go. Kind of getting the gist of everything though. <laughs> All right, lime. You think? I think a lime. <clears throat> Maybe green apple. Lime. Da -da 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 -da. Welcome to the world of Brig Brigadine, the legend of Runes Runercia. Rune Runercia. 
How do you pronounce that? Runercia. Uh, I don't know why it gives me so much trouble. This tutorial will explain the controls while you play the game. In this tutorial, you'll learn about the various factors that affect the outcome of a battle. All right, skills and spells. Units can use skills and spells during battle. From the action menu, select skill, spell, skill or spell to see a list of skills or spells a unit can use. This list will show information such as range, power, and elements. Skills or spells that cannot be used after moving are designated by a footprint icon. Okay. All right. Skills and spell stats. Skills and spells have stats such as power, accuracy, and MP consumed. Elements, the power of a skill or spell depends on units and target element. Range, range of a skill or spell, ground, sky, accuracy against ground or flying units. Down is ineffective, up is effective, guaranteed hit is a star. Counterattack, use this skill spell and up enemy will counter, X enemy won't counter. Turn one. Am I going to move again? Huh. There are a few ways to launch an attack that depends on the classes of the units of the battlefield. On the battlefield. Let's learn about the properties of some skills and spells. Alright, we're gonna move, move on right here. Oh wait. We're not moving them yet. I'm supposed to be reading. I can't go back, so Grados Paladin class means that he has a lot of physical attacks and strong defensive capability. He is best suited for the vanguard on the battlefield. Move. Alright. Oh, he got a lot of movement. Mm. Probably shouldn't have put that in. Alright. Stand by. Selecting our unicorn. Move. I guess we're supposed to just move all of these since we know how to do it. They don't really care to talk about it every single time. I'm sure, once they want me to use a skill or spell, they'll tell me. So until then, stand by. This dude's big. What is this? Cyclops. This dude's big. What kind of attack power does this guy have? I uh, can't see it right now. <laughs> All right. I'm just, uh, Jiyu is the high priestess of the Norzalio kingdom. Everyone in Rus Runercia has heard of this grand witch. Her class is Saint, which focuses on range healing and magic attacks. Make her making her better suited for the rear guard position. Monsters also have vanguard and rear guard roles like Grados and Jiu. The best troop is one that is well balanced and thus ready for anything. Move. Uh, that's not the rear guard. We're moving her up that far, I think. Unless because we're putting things in front of her. Protector, maybe. Move. Yeah, it looks like we're putting stuff in front of her. Goblin Knight, man, that dude looks pretty wicked. Stand by. Yeah. Ow. Defense skill, what? Tail whip missed. Nice. Killer shot did not. Good counter there, Centaur. Critical hit. No! Uh, no critical hits on the Centaur. Oh, not my Cyclops. 
Ooh, 150, nice. That's a counter, and he's stunned it. Looks like he's stunned now. Okay. Ooh, 232, that's what you get for a hero. All right, turn number two. Did he just heal 24 on his own? And so did that guy, so did that guy heal up? What? Now the battle will begin in earnest. What caused them to heal up? I'm about to figure that out. A units move around as mute. I'll get it. I'll get it. As units move around and gather in one place, effects like zone of control and enclosure may trigger. Let's see what those effects do. Zone of control. A unit zone of control consists of six hexagons around them. This area affects the unit's mobility. You cannot move through an enemy's unit's six hex zone of control. This allows for various zone of control strategies such as placing units to restrict enemy movement, protecting your rear guard, or keeping units in critical condition out of harm's way. Enclosure. This effect is activated when you overlap all six hexagons of an enemy unit's zone of control with an ally's zone of control when you see a chain icon on this on a space within your movement range moving a unit there will activate an enclosure enclosed enemies are marked with a chain and this has an effect on accuracy and critical rate. good or bad all right skills and magics can target single units or all units within a given range and have different effects such as dealing damage healing or boosting stats Gra grados knows iron aura a skill that boosts his defense activate it now in preparation for the upcoming battle iron aura 30 MP. Just cast it on himself. For example, the Pegasus Halo spell guarantees that an ally next an ally's next attack will hit and increase the experience gained that action. This can be great for units with low accuracy, such as the Cyclops. However, the Pegasus doesn't fare well in direct combat, so place it safely out of reach in General Grados's rear guard. Which we did. Magic. Hollow. I think it wanted me to do that. What is this thing? White Elemental. Ranged attacks can hit several enemy units at once. One example of this is Breath, which can be used by dragons and elementals. Breath-like attacks have different attributes such as attacking in a straight line or damaging everything in a one hex radius. They also cannot be countered, though they will deal damage to allies as well. Now move the white element, select the holy shot from its skill list, then press the A button to attack. Is that where it wants me to move? Yep, it is. All right. Okay, so you can move the map around using the right stick. Nice. All right, let's go there. Skill. Holy shot. And confirm. Hit three noise. All right. And next one is Archangel. Magic is the most effective way to target multiple foes. Most magic attacks are guaranteed to hit, making them a very reliable option. Magic may target units around the caster or everything around a given point on the map. Some affect all units equally while others like Holy Word will only target enemies. Next let's use the Archangel's Holy Ward spell so that you can observe the wide range 
an incredible power of this spell. All right, we're just gonna go from where we're at. Holy Ward. We're gonna use it on the purple Revenant. Yeah. Holy moly, got all but the one in the back. All right, now Cyclops' turn. Status conditions can play a large part in turning the tides of battle. Certain skills, magics, or even regular attacks have a chance of inflicting a status condition, which was that guy being stunned. Status conditions include faint, poison, paralyze, petrify, and charm. Besides this Cyclops, Goblin Knights, and enemy Mandrakes units on the battlefield can inflict these stasis conditions. If your unit gets inflicted with the sta stasis condition, use GU's Medica, Medica spell to restore them to normal. Status conditions. Some skills and spells can affect a unit's stats or status conditions. Status conditions, like petrify and poison, persist from the moment they are cast. Others, like faint and paralyze, recover after a set amount of turns. Some, like Petrify, can only be cured with the Cure spell. Stasis conditions are displayed above the HP bar in the unit information. Alright, it says attack with heavy impact. Heavy impact! Boom. Finish him! Oh, it didn't. How many hit points does that guy have? All right, now we're gonna select Saint. Let's talk about healing multiple units. Gu knows area heal, a spell that restores his hit points of all the units within a certain range. We're gonna heal the ally units that just received damage while fighting the enemy. Magic. Is it area cure I'm supposed to pick? Here you heal. Okay. Got a lot of them, all right. Let's try the Holy Dragon's range attack. Keep in mind, however, that this dragon's breath skill and spell can't be used right after a unit is moved. Now use the directional button to choose an area without allies, then attack the a with the A button. Holy breath. Hmm. That looks like the only option. All right, let's do it. One goes down, nice. All right, we're on the high centaur. Range attacks can strike enemies from a distance. Hunter classes and centaur monsters are skilled in these techniques. Ranged attacks are hard to counter, which makes them a great guarantee for some easy damage. However, depending on the unit you target, they may encounter with they may counter with the ranged attack of their own. A high centaur and goblin knight in your troop can use ranged attacks. Tide, try distancing yourself from the enemy, then attack with the high centaur. Move. Alright, skill. Killer shot. Wants me to finish this guy off. I'm down for that. Oh, it did. Okay, I thought it didn't finish him off. I was like, what's he got? Like one hit point left? One hit point? Alright, so now. Next, let's try out the Goblin Knight's Raged Attack. This skill also has a chance of inflicting paralysis on top of dealing damage. 
Skill can't be used right after the unit has moved, so select a spare wave from the unit's skill list before moving. <clears throat> okay, we're going for the wolf. Can he move after? No, nope, I guess he can't. Yeah. Enemy side. Uh. Counter for your face. Knights and monsters also possess abilities. You can view a unit's abilities from the stats screen. Let's take a look at Grados' ability as an example. Shield block S reduces damage by 25% when activated and HP recovery by 3% of the unit's match, max health points every turn. When a knight's change, or when a knight changes classes, they may keep their old abilities or they may be upgraded into more powerful abilities. Wait and battle on your own now. Units in the same troop can take action in any order you like. Use the knowledge you've gained to secure a victory. All right, so. All right, he does. Let's go ahead and try that uh, judgment. Holy break, why does the MP cost zero? Yeah. That was weird, why was the MP cost zero? turn is the next this guy oh he can't move over there nobody's adjacent so can I move there I can oh good you can undo I don't want to move him here. Let's do this. Alright, uh. <clears throat> Whose turn is it? It is the. Oh, it's the Archangel's turn. All right, we're going to go Hyper Fizz, maybe? Ooh, big boom, baby. All right. 
健在ぶりをお見せしましょう。Looking to see what she has here. Do we need to heal? We do not. So we can. Do we want to finish this guy off here or go here? Go ahead and finish this guy off. Always good to get rid of an enemy when you can. Alright. What is his, his skills? Alright, let's move. No. Alright, who next is the centaur? Let's go ahead and move the centaur behind the dragon. There's no counter there. Ha ha ha! What skills does this guy have? Defensive skill, not good. Just give up already. You're done. All right, what we got here? We got Holy Slash. Iron Aura. Holy slash him. <laughs> See out of mana. Just stand by on him. Stand by. Oh, I gotta move first because, well, I can't. Yeah, yeah. He's not gonna make it past this round, I don't think. With my Cyclops. There we go. That is combat strategies. Combat is deep and long in this game. That's one thing that I noticed. Uh, I think when I was flipping through Valkos's video, he uh, had a combat that lasted like 50 minutes or something. I'm not sure how long this one lasted, but it was quite a bit. And it's just a tutorial. Congratulations for a battle well won. Now you can occupy this base and make it your own. You, your strengthened knights and monsters are sure to put up even more of a fight the next battle. Think carefully about the strategy that works best for the situation, such as defeating a knight so that monsters, that monster troops are forced to retreat. Rewards await after a successful battle and all units left standing on the battlefield map will also gain experience. If there are any enemy monsters on the map that didn't manage to flee in time, you can capture them and add them to your own troops. Oh. Capture them? Nice. Good work completing all of the objectives in this tutorial. This tutorial focused on combat strategies. The next tutorial will explain quests. Let's go. Let's rock and roll and rock and roll. We need to know how quests work. 
so we can level up our guys without having them risk combat I hope anyways hope that's what it does we're loading all right we're done loading <coughs> organizational phase quest rewards Welcome to the world of Brigadine, the legend of Runer Sia. I got it. Well, at least I said it without messing up. I might not have said it right, but I didn't pause. This tutorial will explain the country controls, country, the controls while you play the game. In this tutorial, you learn about quests as they are a great way to level up your knights and monsters. Good, that's what I was hoping. First, select quests from the base menu. All right, go down to quest. There are two categories for quests. Exploration quests for obtaining items or monsters and training quests for earning experience. Exploration quests acquire item equipment and, or monsters on these quests. Success and drop rates will vary depending on the dispatch knight's level and class. Training quests. Acquire XP for the knights and monsters in the dispatch troop. Quests are divided into exploration and training categories. Choose one troop of the station, one of the troops stationed at your base, and select dispatch begin. Select destination from the list to the right to view available exploration quest locations. Depending on your current base, different quests with different rewards may be available. Destination with a higher outlook have better chance of yielding rare rewards. Okay, so the more arrows underneath, the better chance. Okay. The flashing rune knight icon indicates that there's a rune knight located here. You may be able to recruit them if you encounter them on a quest. Okay. Now, try dispatching a troop on an exploration quest. No, you can't dispatch the ruler... Rubino on an exploration quest. So no rulers. Select the troop with the A button. Choose the location from the available destination and press the A button again to confirm. A quest outlook will change depending on your knight's level and class. And the higher the outlook, the better reward your knight can find during a quest. Okay, they want me to select the top one. It's got three arrows on the outlook. Let's go. You've now dispatched one of your knights to the Tillam Valley. Brendan has good compatibility with the Delzin Plains. Try dispatching him there. Plains of Delza. The last troop on this list is low level, so it's best. Ah, a lot of reading in this one. So it's best to send troops like this on training quests to help them get stronger. Training quests lets knights and monsters gain experience in a safe environment. Quests like this are ideal for monsters you've only recently summoned, as those monsters may not be battle ready yet. Let's give it a try. Select picks. Select picks. Well, that's the guy's name. Pick troops and send them to the training ground I was like select picks that doesn't make sense is that and then it's it's a guy it's, uh, a name wonder if that's a play off a of puck from berserk kind of does look like a fairy type character all right anyways training grounds all your troops are now dispatched and until the end of the current season there are few other things you should be aware of when it comes to dispatching troops on quest. Troops away on quest will be absent from their base during the attack phase. This means they will be unable to fend off enemy attacks or invade enemy bases. Not good. Press the B button twice to return to the main map and advance the season to view the results of the quest. One, two. 
Press the minus button to end the organization phase and attack phase. This will also conclude this one season. Yes. Attack phase. Advance the season. Yes. Quest results. <clears throat> Holy Thunderbolt. It's an icy helm. Results screen shows the reward acquired this season. They may include items or equipment, all of which have their own rarity rating from one to three stars. Monsters may also be recruited to join your forces at the end of a quest. Training quests will display experience gained, experience XP instead of items, and rune knights or monsters that give the necessary experience will immediately level up. Ah, it is a fairy. All right. Nice. Hello. Good Jorce. These names are pretty crazy. A new knight has been recruited. When you encounter a rune knight during quest, they will be recruited as a new knight. Knights are essential for expanding and defending your territory. Take advantage of quests with a rune knight icon to be proactive in dispatching troops for these quests. My name is Shu Fan. I will gladly risk my life to save everyone else. Sounds like a healer to me. Good work completing all of the objectives in this tutorial. Tutorial focused on quests. Next tutorial will cover the change the class of your knights and monsters. How many tutorials are there? That's right, we'll do them all. Just get them out the way. That way we know how to play. Class change. Let's go. Let's rock and or roll. Let's keep it under the control. Let's go. Unit level. When a unit levels up, their ability become more powerful. More power. It's all about that power. The more units you hit with an area effect skill or spell, the more something or other. Let me see it. Tips for class changes. Welcome to the world of Brigadine, the Legend of Runer Sia. This tutorial will explain the controls while you play the game. This tutorial will cover how to change a unit's class. First, select the class from the menu. All right, we're going down to class. Each unit has a class, their job, or species. Gain experience through battles or quests to raise a unit's level. If the unit is a knight, the proficiency tier will also increase. Units can change classes after fulfilling conditions such as reaching a certain level or proficiency tier, raising certain stats, or obtaining a, certain, a specific item. There are six proficiency tiers. The unit's proficiency tier increased by one for each level a unit gains. Reaching tier 5, Master, will allow you to carry over certain spells and abilities when changing their class. Spells and abilities that can be carried over have a Master icon that will change color once the unit reaches the Max Proficiency tier. Select a unit on the class screen to see their current class and the hierarchy of future classes. Classes cannot be reverted to a lower class in the same class type. But changing to a new type will allow a unit to start from the lowest class in that type. Note, units returning to a class type will continue from whatever their tier was before changing the class. Some class types split into two paths. In this case, you can only choose one path. You cannot change to a class that is lower than your current class. You cannot change to your current class. The up icon indicates that you can change your class. Select Paladin as your new class and press the A button to confirm. The a lock icon is displayed if you are unable to change class. With the conditions you still need to meet grayed out, in this case, your proficiency is insufficient. Next, we will try changing a Rune Knight's class. Select Shizzler to begin. All right, Shizzler. Sounds like some kind of weird candy. Twizzlers, shizzlers, you know. 
When a knight's up when a knight upgrades to a new class, they can carry over their current proficiency. Changing to a different class type may require that a certain conditions be met first. Some classes have different progression paths for male and female units. Let's take a look at how to change to a different class type. Select mage type from the list above. I don't want it to be a mage though. You can compare different classes stats before making a change. In this case, the current class knight is on the left and the new class mage is on the right. Stats are higher than your current class will be displayed in green, while lower stats will be displayed in red. So my defense goes down, my HP goes down, my hip attack goes down, my strength goes down. Fun. Press the R button twice to switch to the magic tab. This screen shows the different magic techniques each class can learn. Note the heal skill in blue has the master icon next to it. Skills like this, which have reached their maximum proficiency, can be carried over to the new class type. Skills that haven't been mastered yet will be grayed out to show they cannot be carried over. Proficiency is a stat exclusive to knights and increase, increases by one every time they level up. A skill is, um, is mastered once it reaches a proficient, proficiency tier of 5. Master abilities and magic can be carried over to a new class when changing classes. Use this to your advantage to make your knight more powerful than ever. Now try changing this unit's class to mage. I don't wanna... I don't wanna... It looks so cool as a knight though. Alright, whatever. It's tutorial. Mm. Nina's class has now changed. Switching to a new class type is a great way to acquire new skills to make you troops more versatile. Be aware that once you have upgraded to a new class, you cannot return to a lower ranked version of the same that same class. Monsters can also change their class. Press the B button twice to return to the troop screen. Troop screen. All right. Monsters capable of changing class will have up displayed on their icon. Most monsters will gain access to a new class after reaching a certain level. Others may require specific items to unlock their new classes. Let's take a look at how to change a monster unit's class. Select the imp to begin. The process is largely the same for monsters as it is for knights. Select the gremlin class to change it. Oh, I wasn't on it. Select Grimlin class. Monsters can only upgrade to a new version of their current class. Like with the knights, you can compare stats first with the current class displayed on the left and the new class on the right. Changing to a higher class means better stats and combat power. However, more experience will be required to reach each new level. Changing classes can also increase a monster's magic cost and upkeep. Mana. So keep an eye on your magic pool and mana reserve. Now press the R button to view the monster's magic. Where does this show there? Magic cost. Oh, so doubling this guy's magic cost. Got it. Boom, boom, magic. Changing from an imp to a gremlin will give this unit access to new spells, different monsters, learn different spells and abilities. So. Experiment and bring out your monster's best quality. React is one of the gremlin's best skills. It can give a unit two actions in the same turn. Nice. Now try changing this monster's class. You cannot revert to a lower class in this. Changing, rearranging. He's pink now. He's pink now. Good work completing all the objectives in this tutorial. Changing units class is a great and exciting way to see the results of your troops training and hard work throughout many battles. 
This concludes the final tutorial. All the tutorials can be replayed at any time. Feel free to go through them again if you need a refresher on this information. Alright, what's it loading now? Alright, we did all that. So now, all we have is the main mode, which we will do in the next episode because we're way over the hour mark, which is the max that I like to do. So, I mean, uh, we come back. The next episode will be doing the main mode. It says, choose one of six powers and reclaim the pages of the Legend of Runercia as you aim to unify the land. So we'll actually get into the game, see how everything goes from turn to turn, and see how rough it could be. We will have to see. So until next episode, take care. Bye-bye now. Static Buzz. This is going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy this. Just giving a little time for them. End screen videos to pop up. You need about 20 seconds in there. You guys ever wonder why I put that gap at the end? That's why. So that I don't actually cover anything you guys might want to see when I put those videos at the end. So I always go... 20 or so seconds past being actually done. Sometimes I look in the menu, sometimes I look at, you know, other things, trying to make it. I can't really do that here because I'm waiting to go in the main mode. But anyways, that should be more than enough time. <laughs>